So I'm going to share a little bit about this Rainer lens. So outcomes with bilateral implantation of a monofocal eye wall. This is actually a monofocal eye wall specifically designed for enhanced monovision. Financial disclosures as such. So press biopia has correctly or incorrectly always been regarded or perhaps question mark, holy grail of ophthalmology. Why? Because patients are always looking for spectacle independence now. Now we have too many options. I think looking at this, you know, all these are available and they are more on the horizon. So what do we use? So my talk is about this particular lens. I think if you've not had this chance to try and hopefully after my talk you might consider. This is a monofocal lens, it's preloaded and the, these are the technical aspects from the box. So it is a preloaded lens, it's hydrophilic, one piece C loop and the A constants are all down here. I leave that to Dr. Yo to talk to you about the different formulae. So my initial experience is described where I use bilateral implantation just to assess what kind of vision my patients will get with the dominant eye going for ametropia at first minus I'm aiming for using the Barrett formula. Sorry, Dr. Ping Kwan. Non-dominant eye, I used low myopia about a diopter, and they all had to have corneal astigmatism less than a diopter because they don't have a toric version. But watch this space. Is that right, Sam? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, I don't have it, so. So we have 17 ladies and eight gentlemen in my cohort, and you see most of them are Chinese, and that's quite important because most of them are reading Chinese characters as well, and I'll tell you why. So primary endpoints, looking at binocular vision, unaided at distance, intermediate and near. Secondary endpoints, looking at, of course, best corrected vision, looking at the refractive predictability as we want to, at any new lens that we try out, looking at contrast sensitivity, whether it's any different from a monofocal lens, binocular defocus curve, and some practical quality of life VF14 index. So very typical age group for cataracts, uh, cataract patients, 60 plus, 70, and nothing too significant. You've got a little good, a decent spread of axial length from the slightly shorter eye to the 27 millimeter eye. And really the vision is your typical cataract patients. So looking at the visions, uncorrected VA, looking from the bars as seen here, the distant eyes. Of course, if you're looking at a target for distance, they would have better post-op uncorrected VA. This is at one month compared to the near eyes in the uh, Tiffany blue here. And with the binocular summation effect, you see nicely whether it's distance, intermediate or near, you do get an improvement. So 0 0.3 binocular for near is about N8. It's not too bad. Corrected vision, I think, again, showing the binocular summation effect and all pretty decent. So this is where this falls a little bit short. I think in my cohorts, I found that I had some outliers. The A constants, I think Dr. Yeo will allude to, was a little bit too high, and I think I didn't correct for the A constant early enough. I've done 50 eyes here. I should have done it earlier. So you will see that, really, the percentage within half a diopter is what we should be looking at and it's around about 50 plus 60 percent which is not quite good enough but within a diopter we got majority of the patients so I think when you tweak the A constant in this case it probably is about 118 did you say yeah about 118 this one the, off the box is about 118.6 so post-op refractive cylinder I think we have about three quarters of diopter or less in majority of our patients again some outliers because we didn't have the toric version as you know when we actually push to correct these eyes without a toric correction, you're going to have those where they will have um, some residual astigmatism, more than half a diopter, which will impact on their uncorrected vision. What's reassuring is their photopic and their mesopic, um, the, sorry, the, the, the uh, EMV contrast sensitivity. I did have a cohort of patients in my L convivity group, and it's quite similar and slightly better off as you would expect in a motofocal lens. And this is very comparable with any other motofocal lens you would have. What of course we want to look at is the defocus curve. I think with the distance eyes, you'll see very good distance vision. As you go towards the reading targets, you see a little drop off or rather a rel relatively moderately steep drop off. With the near eyes, you do do a bit better with your reading. But again, binocularly, you see that actually being pushed up. So they get decent reading up to about N8, sometimes a little bit worse. Now, if you do want to compare, because I have a cohort of patients that have been using trifocals, I use my EDOFs as well. So the panoptics, of course, will give you great reading, a relatively flat defocus curve, which is what we like. And the vivity is there, and the EMV is really comparable. So you look at this, this is a monofocal lens. So this is a monofocal plus, if you want to call it. So it's very comparable with an EDOF like vivity. And this is important because obviously, you know, we can show all kinds of data and whether our patients are happy. So this questionnaire is designed 
very practically to look at the different aspects of um, daily living. So you see uh, reading small print, large print, newspapers, etc., going all the way through to driving and what their actual satisfaction scores are. So you can see most of them on average is between one and two, which is really no difficulty or mild difficulty. And consequently, if you look at this, they actually get a score system that comes out total. If it's a, out of 100 is the maximum, you get a mean score of all 25 patients of about 95.83. So despite the fact they don't get very, very good reading, but I think, again, patient selection is there. You never don't promise them good reading, but you find that you're still very happy with the lens. So just to summarize, you get good unaided binocular vision on the whole. Distant and intermediate is pretty decent. Functional near vision, but as I mentioned, you know, my, my data is skewed towards the Chinese patients that read a lot of Chinese characters. An example of these here is what they would be looking at. And all those little strokes, when you try to read a newspaper particularly, it'd be quite challenging. So really, despite that, you did have very good satisfaction scores. I think the predictability is at least the spherical part can be improved with A-constant optimization. And the toric version, I'm really looking forward to start using that would really fine-tune and tighten up those results and get the uncorrected visions better. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to give uh, you my lecture here about my first experience with the Ray-1 EMV Toric. Um, and I will explain also a little bit the concept of the Arena EMV. I'm very sorry I cannot attend in person. Hopefully in the future I can travel to Kuala Lumpur and to Singapore. These are my disclosures. When we look at the Ray-1 IOLs, they are all uh, fully preloaded here. You see uh, all the lenses that are available from the enhanced uh, monofocal, toric, standard lenses, trifocal, trifocal, toric. So everything is listed here. Uh, the Rayner uh, uh, injector, I think it's, it's an excellent injector. We tested this in the David Apple lab several times, so we are very happy with that. Uh, you get the lens in the usual range between 10 and 30 diopters in 0.5 diopter steps. The cylinder is available in 0.75 diopter steps, as you can see here, from plus 0.75 up to plus 4.5 diopters. And here is the entire family, uh, uh, the Ray-1 uh, um, EMV lenses were launched last year, uh, and the Toric version as well, uh, and introduced at the meetings there. So the extended range of vision uh, with the Ray-1 EMV uh, is around up to 1.5 diopter with ametropic target, but you can increase that with uh, um, a monovision type of things. Uh, it's a non-diffractive IOL, which has, of course, very good contrast sensitivity, no dysphotopsia. And uh, because of the positive spherical aberration it is inducing, it provides a much smoother transition between distance and near uh, uh, eyes, you have to say that. And it's also available now as a toric lens. So the positive spherical aberration create this kind of 1 to 1.5 diopter deep focus range, uh, uh, which is very important, especially also it's going on around the hyperopic range. So this is a typical defocus curve you have here, and you see how broader this is. Uh, as I said, also number three here in the hyperopic range, as well as number two, as you can see here in the uh, myopic range. So we can take advantage of this for a better landing zone, but also for uh, combining this in a binocular uh, fashion, um, especially with a monovision type of thing. And uh, when we look at the mono, monovision type of thing, there's a kind of normogram, yeah, uh, how you can do that uh, with, with this uh, offsetting here, as you can say. and. You don't need to get away from each other so much. Half a diopter, more or less, is enough. Maximum one diopter, which gives you almost uh, two and a half diopter of uh, defocus, because the curve is so uh, so big in both directions. Yeah. So here you see uh, uh, again this setting. Uh, if you go to one diopter, you get easily to to reading uh, a distance uh, here. So here you see uh, the metropia target. I have a nice patient example here of a Ray-1 EMV toric uh, version. This is a 64-year-old female. Uh, you see here the visual acuity and also that she has a uh, 1.5, almost 1.5 diopter astigmatism uh, in both eyes. This has been calculated with the calculator from Rayner. And these lenses have been identified, as you can see, for the right and the left eye. Uh, 
First surgery was done uh, September 22nd uh, last year, the first one in Germany or in the German speaking area, as you can see here, using the Advio microscope and everything. And uh, these are sequences from the uh, surgery. The surgery video is too long to show here in the short uh, movie. And you can see here uh, before we left the eye how good the situation was. The very first day outcome was excellent, uncorrected visual acuity of zero logma, even better than zero logma. Uh, patient was very uh, happy with that, as you can see here. So here we see the follow up after one week post op. You see uh, excellent outcome, uh, distance acuity minus 0.2 logma, and uh, a very good intermediate and near acuity after one month. Near acuity even became better. Some fluctuation after three months, near acuity was a little bit less. But now after six months, uh, better than zero logma in all uh, distances and uh, appropriate, appropriate uh, defocus curve, as you can see here, gives you an idea uh, how excellent this lens uh, performs in this in this condition. So we are very happy about the outcome here. Uh, also the stability of the toric lens of both the eyes, as you can see here. The patient is very happy. Uh, even the near, she can see more or less very, very nicely, zero logma, or 0 0.1 logma. Occasionally, uh, depending on the light, uh, she is using some, some spectacles for the near, but very, very rarely. So she's very happy and we were very happy to be the first in Germany last year to put these lenses uh, into the eye. Well, when we come to the conclusions, we can say that the Ray 1 EMV and the uh, Toric version really offers a very nice increased range of focus of like 1 to 5 diopter, uh, especially when we just look at the emetropic target. If we do mini monovision or something like this, we can go up to 2.5 diopters. Um, the Toric version is a very good uh, new IOL with very good rotational stability, uh, uh, similar actually to the Ray 1 Toric, the normal lens. And uh, very good concept here, I have to say. The IOL power calculation and implantation and so on is all uncomplicated. There's no, no big secret here in that. And the very first one in Germany is, is such an overwhelming, excellent result, all, almost unbelievable, but it's a true value. And I just saw it today, actually, uh, for the six months uh, follow-up. So long term, of course, follow-up is uh, very important here. But I think uh, we have an excellent platform here, a non diffractive basis, which will help our diffractive patient, uh, our refractive patients very much. So thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. So I'm not going to go through the design of the lens, which uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Alford has already described. So basically this study, uh, we divided our patients into two groups, one with bilateral amyotropia, one with uh, mono, modest monovision, uh, one eye with amyotropia, targeted with amyotropia, the other eye we targeted for minus 1.5. So we looked at the visual acuity for distance, intermediate and near, as well as the refraction and the focus measurements at one month. Uh, under photopic and mesopic conditions, we also measured the pupil sizes. So this was uh, 60 eyes from 30 patients, uh, more females than male, 18 to 12, average age of 69 years old, uh, ranging 44 to 81 years old, uh, 22 patients in the bilateral amyotropia group, eight patients in the modest monovision group. And we can see that we have a good range of patients, uh, short eyes to long eyes, flat case to steep case, and the range of IOL, we almost use the full range of the IOLs for the Rayner EMV from 10 diopters to 24 diopters. So this is the best corrected distance visual acuity. So all the patients achieve very good, uh, good log mark distance visual acuity, uh, about 80, 98%, 0.3, within 0.2. So really this plays uh, really the importance of correcting astigmatism to deliver the best outcome for this lens. Uh, for intermediate uh, visual acuity, you can see that about half the patients gets about LOGMA 0.2. So that's pretty encouraging for 60 centimeters. And if you look at near uh, visual acuity, we still have about 40% of patients achieving LOGMA 0.2. So that's pretty good. So LOGMA 0.2 is about 6.9 vision. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the defocus curve. So this is just monocular photopic conditions, just one eye. And if you look at the defocus curve, you can see that for LOGMA of 0.1, you get about 0.7 diopters range. For LOGMA of 0.2, you get about 1.1 diopters range. That's pretty good for a single eye. 
In the mesopic, con uh, if we look at the full range, is about 1.35 diopters. In the mesopic conditions, which is pretty similar, 0 0.6 for 0 0.1 logma, and then about one diopter for 0 0.2 logma. Uh, what is amazing is uh, for this lens, which we found was that if we do binocular uh, defocus, this amazing summation that you can see. So if you implant the EMV in both eyes, the range of the defocus increases for to 1.35 diopters at 0 0.1 logma and 1.8 diopters for 0 0.2 logma. So it explains why Dr. Budi's patients is really able to have some functional intermediate and near vision. And then he, with uh, a bit of offset or mini monovision, it, it pushes it even more. And the full range, you get about 2.2 uh, diopters uh, across for 0 0.1 logma. And next, um, if you look at the uh, mesopic conditions, we get similar outcomes, 0 0.1, 0 0.9 diopters for 0 0.1 logma, and 1.35 diopters for 0 0.2 logma, and 1.7 uh, diopters for the full range across. Uh, what is interesting is the monovision group. I'm going to show you. So this is the defocus curve for the eye that's targeted for distance. And this is the defocus curve for the eye that's targeted for minus 1.5. So if you do binocular uh, summation, this is the outcomes for the patient. And you can see that they are seeing 1.7 uh, diopters range at 0 0.1 logma and 2.4 diopters range at uh, 0 0.2 logma. So almost completely spectacle free when you are from near from distance to near when you implant uh, uh, the EMV with a monovision uh, strategy and across the range you get 2.1 diopters and this is for the photopic conditions and then for the mesopic conditions again this is the defocus curve for the distance I this is the defocus curve for the uh, uh, minus 1.5 target I and then binocularly, again, they have very good summation. You get 1.8 diopters uh, at 0 0.1 logma, and again, 2.4 diopters at 0 0.2 logma. So really not much difference between when you use this lens in the dark or in the day. And across the range, you get uh, two diopters um, ac across the range. So really, uh, if you target for bilateral amyotropia, you get a range of about 0 0.9 diopters to 1.35 diopters for near at 0 0.1 logma, 1.35 diopters to 1.8 diopters range from near at 0 0.2 logma. If you do a modest monovision strategy, you get a really good range of 1.7 diopters to 1.8 diopters uh, range for 0 0.1 logma and up to 2.4 diopter range for 0 0.2 logma. So this is almost completely spectacle free. Of course, the, my patients, some of them still need uh, some uh, reading glasses for uh, certain characters, uh, Chinese characters. But uh, it is very good functional vision, uh, functional near vision, if you t uh, do a modest model vision uh, strategy. So there's good summation between both eyes, uh, similar outcomes for both photopic and mesopic conditions. And if we go back and look at the defocus curves here, you can see that uh, if we go a little bit plus on the other side, especially this one, the visual acuity still stays quite good at zero, near close to zero, uh, zero logma. So if you do want to push a bit more near, you, there's a possibility of aiming a little bit even more myopic, just like what Dr. Budi did. Yeah. Okay, so if we look at the pupil sizes, uh, so this is the visual acuity, uh, and we plot against pupil sizes uh, for all patients, uh, and we look at the logma visual acuity for the focus of minus one and the focus of minus 1.5, you can see there's no trend. So basically, this is this lens is virtually pupil independent, and really the pupil size doesn't really affect its uh, outcome for this cohort of patients. Next, we'll look at the predictability, which uh, Manuel talked about, and we all the patients uh, for this cohort we use the Barrett Universal Two formula, and you can see that the outcomes are pretty good with about uh, the Barrett performed the best, about 85% within 0.5. Uh, then of course the modern formulas like Evo Kane did better and then the traditional formulas. And then this is the A constant that's suggested by Rayner, but when we optimized for our current data set, we found that if we use that constant, it was a bit myopic. So we actually, when we optimized it in the end, the Barrett A constant was 118 for my population, the EVO 118.1 uh, 
uh, pain 118.1, and that's the Hague's holiday one of the QNSRKP. So uh, I would suggest you can start with the Rayner constant, and then if you do find that you're getting a bit myopic, you can start to optimize your own personal constant as you go along. Uh, in summary, I think the Rayner EMV is an amazing lens. Um, yeah, it's good distance intermediate when you aim for bilateral amyotropia, good distance in intermediate and near vision when you do a modest model vision strategy. It is pupil independent. Uh, it works well in both photopic and mesopic conditions. And uh, for the A constant, I would suggest to optimize your personal A constant. Uh, it may be different in your population. Thank you very much. How are you integrating the ENV to your private practice, actually? Because um, it is a monofocal lens. And um, how are you counseling your patients in that sense? And what, what kind of patients are you using it for? I think we have too many lens choices now. And that just reflects the fact that we don't have a perfect lens. Now, we have a market of patients now, particularly whether it's private practice or in the public sector. I think you have patients looking for more and more um, spectacle independence purely because we have, they are of the baby boomer age group, getting into that, they're very active, they want that spectacle freedom. So I think trifocals is in my armamentarium, EDOFs and monofocals. So how do I choose really depends on the time that you spend talking to the patient. So I think if you have individuals that are very keen on getting good reading, and in, the, in my practice now, I'm learning the hard way, I find that I'm going to make sure what they're reading. Are they reading Chinese? Are they reading English? Malay or, you know, if you have the Roman capitals together with the Chinese characters, it's different in my practice, I find. So if they really want good reading, and I will tell them that you probably need a trifocal lens if you don't want any glasses at all. And what happens then, you have to be prepared for the dysphotopsias, the halos and the glare that's going to be part and parcel of that, and the slight drop in the quality of vision. Now, if they think that that's not a thing for them because they drive or they're just not keen on having that, then I will talk about perhaps if you want a little bit more um, independence, but you don't mind wearing the occasional readers, then perhaps the EDOF lens, Vivity or one of the EDOFs in the market. So if you have a non-diffractive EDOF, which is what I would prefer, because then you have some distinction from the trifocal, because then you have less halos and glare with that particular non-diffractive EDOF, then yeah, I'll tell them that. But you will still have to actually wear a pair of readers if you want to read very well. Uh, how do you counsel your patients on the concept of monovision? So uh, some of the patients may not be that comfortable with something, oh, when I see far, when I see near end. Do you find that a difficult thing to do? Yeah, I think, I think maybe in our European colleagues, they probably don't do as much monovision. A lot of them go amatropa, or they do? They've come around to it. They've come around to it, okay. Right, okay. So I think monovision is a concept that not everyone can accept. So I think a lot of the time you really have to spend some time to explain to them that you're not going to offset them so much. And because this lens um, might give you a little bit more of some sort of blended vision, so there's not such a big gap between your distance and your near. And I think anisometropia is not quite that significant. Yeah. But there's no way of really trying it out because I think contact lens trials in cataract patients don't really work. Yeah, so, I completely agree. Yeah. I don't really do any contact lens trials for my patients because the cataract is so significant and uh, we don't really do full monovision like in the past anymore. These are just modest or mini monovision. So there a lot of patients have mild and isometropia in their refractions anyway and they completely tolerate that. So do you think minus one is a good target for patients or do you actually cater different targets for different type of patients? Yeah, I think minus one is what I did here. But because you know the spread of um, the, the final outcomes was a little bit wide, I think it did not reflect clearly as to you know, how tight my results were. But I think minus one isn't too bad. But if they really want reading, I think they may need a bit more. So the usual I used to do with the standard monofocals and torics is 1.5. Yeah. But again, in this group, I had some patients which I found that, you know, we put down less than adapter. So if you look at the printout, sometimes from your optical biometer, it says less than adapter. But you implant it or you implant it, right? If you plug those data or the K readings into a calculator like yours or Barrett's, it will come up with some sort of a stigmatic correction, usually T2 or something like that, which is required. And if you correct that, I think that will make a difference for monovision patients. Yeah, I completely agree because um, 
Yes, yeah, stigmatism correction is crucial from what I've seen from my patients. Um, and uh, really look forward to uh, having a toric uh, version here in our region. I'm doing a study for Rainer, whereby we divided patients into two groups. One group for uh, with bilateral amyotropia, the other group with amyotropia and uh, target myopic target of minus 1.5. So basically, modest model vision. So we, we've been getting very encouraging results with the bilateral amyotropia. Uh, we see very good summation with the both eyes. They get about nearly 1.3 diopters range for near. And then with the modest modern vision, they get up to 2.4 diopters range for near. So really encouraging how a uh, monofocal plus uh, uh, lens can deliver such uh, uh, range of vision for our patients. All right, uh, that's an interesting uh, question. So our study also looked at pupil sizes and uh, we found no correlation between pupil size and amount of uh, near that they can see. So we also did mesopic and mes uh, photopic uh, analysis and it was almost the same for mesopic and photopic conditions. So really, really encouraging results, yeah. Yeah, I think for me, um, really one, the IOL, they have very good centration and the very good stability. Um, for the EMV, I think it's the perfect place, reason for I, what I'm choosing to use is because of the uh, less glare, less halos, and and very good. I think very good uh, night visions from my patients. They, the patient that would like to um, drive in the night, in the evening, and they they would like, because um, they need to work use computers a lot or uh, near like middle to near visions. Yeah. I am Johan Hutauruk from Jakarta, Indonesia. And then the reasons I use Ray One EMV is I want to make my patients free of glasses. So I use the monovisions from the Ray One EMV to provide uh, patients to can see without glasses after cataract surgery. Because for from the the other lens from multifocal patients usually uh, complains about halos and glare, which is not happen in this type of lens. This is about the Ray One EMV. For me, the Rewana EMV is the, a very good lens. I use it for my, let's say, backbone lens. I use many, uh, mostly for the active patients who not don't mind to uh, use the spectacles uh, in a uh, uh, rare time. So the, the patient mostly uh, can do the activity without the spectacles. What's amazing is that I think we're making a fantastic bridge for the surgeon and the patient from standard monofocal to the presbyopic uh, correcting IOL. So this is EMV, EMV toric is a perfect bridge. It's a lens that's extremely forgiving, very easy to use, offers patients excellent outcomes. So patients talk about quality of vision. They appreciate the monofocal light quality of vision they get with this lens. They appreciate the increased range of focus they get. And um, they're really getting a lot for very little compromise. Um, doctors tell us about ease of use. Um, preloaded. Most patients are suitable for this lens. It's a really easy to use, easy to adopt lens. So very positive feedback. I think doctors are beginning to realize that just looking at, oh, are they 6, six N5 and looking at just raw visual acuity data isn't really the point sometimes. And you can have perfectly good looking VA data with a lens and the patient's not happy but with the quality of vision. And with, with EMV, the quality of vision is fantastic. The distance vision is great and that's the main thing.